What is up everybody? This is Lyle with No Hippie Trucking and Transportation. I got on my Super Trucker headset today just so you guys could hear me a little clearer. Like I said, there is a $20 bounty should you see me outside of my truck sporting this around. You know, whether it be to the toilet, to the bank, you know, just nowhere in particular like every other truck driver in the world. $20 bonus. Anyway, before I get <clears throat> too carried away with that, man, this was a horrible run yesterday and the beginning of today. So let me just kind of tell you, I've had these loads where a, <clears throat> the best loads, at least the way I like them, would be when you're able to post up there, maybe at the shipper or receiver, you know, overnight, you know, or within 20, that, you know, 20 miles, uh, before <clears throat> within 20 miles so you don't have a long distance to ride these last loads I've had I've you know including the one I'm on now but we're not going to talk about this one uh, I'm driving like four or five hundred miles into the location and by that time you're a little tired all that kind of stuff so let's talk about yesterday driving into my least favorite state of all Pennsylvania can't stand that state as far as driving in it and uh, I leave at like 3 o'clock in the morning uh, to get to my appointment. <clears throat> so, accidents all over the place. Uh, just a horrible ride. So, I must have seen, again, probably... And you know what? I have some dash cam footage of some of that. Hopefully, I'll be able to get that up within the next uh, couple days or so. But at least 20, 30 semis on different highways on my way out there. Anyway, so I get there. Now, I'm all happy because this uh, receiver is on the border of Pennsylvania and Ohio. So I'm like, good. I don't got to drive deep into that state because, you know, all them hills with ice, that's just a disaster waiting to happen. If not you, somebody else. So anyway. I get to this city of some small ass town and these directions my GPS in the truck my uh, Qualcomm GPS was not it didn't seem like it was sending me the right way it wanted me to go down this uh, no truck uh, you know one of those things that said no trucks you know the truck with the red circle on it so I'm like okay I had a moment of genius and this actually saved me. So I'm driving through the city. I decide, you know what? Rather than mess around with this, I'm gonna get back out on a major street and I'm gonna pull my tandems because I had my tandems pretty far back. I think probably in like the 10th hole or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> and for those of you guys that aren't truck drivers, that means my wheels were f further back like, I, moved, I had my wheels further back to the back of my trailer. So once I drove through that town, I was like, you know what? I need to slide these tandems forward just to navigate through this just in case. So stop, move my tandems all the way to the front so I can maneuver around a little bit better. Call the shipper. Because on the thing, it said, if you have problems finding this place, call the shipper. Because it seems like a lot of people get lost here. So Or the receiver, excuse me. So I call the receiver, and they're like, you know, where are you at? And I'm, you know, I tell them, they're like, okay. And it's this girl that's on the phone. She's like, well, you're gonna wanna go down Vine Street and this and that. Now, Vine Street was the street that had the truck with the circle on it, like no trucks allowed. But I've seen that before, and Prime either had some permits or something like that to where you could take that road. So I was like, you know what? Both of my GPSs were telling me to go this way. The lady's telling me to go this way. I guess that's the way to go. So this is kind of like one of them. It's not a super small town. So this town square, I'm going to call it, was maybe about five blocks by five blocks. So five blocks deep, five blocks long, roughly. So I'm pulling down in here. And once I get down on that thing, I know I'm in trouble, right? So I'm thinking, how am I going to get out of here? traffic around all this kind of stuff not a ton of traffic but enough traffic to where I was getting in people's way so I need to make a right turn and I start making the right turn 
and I realized that uh, I'm not going to clear this. There, there's a stop sign and a street light that I'm about to tear down if I come around this corner. So throw on my hazard lights, get out, assess the situation, and I say, okay. Luckily, there was no cars behind me at this point. So I back back around that corner because I'm like halfway through the corner. So I back around and I back real deep and then I use up <clears throat> both lanes. So traffic coming both ways and so I'm taking up all the street. So I uh, reset up, make the right, or going to make this right turn, going as wide as possible. My trailer still is not going to clear. So there's this uh, guy that's walking on the street. I'm like, hey, can you, t you know, watch me on this, you know, watch this, watch how close I'm coming to this car over on my left. So he's like, yeah, okay. So now <clears throat> I'm figuring I need to back up again, but I need to get my trailer and I can't really explain it. It was just kind of instinct. And I think the longer you drive trucks, the more instinct you're gonna have, but I need to get my trailer I can't explain it. I, I did something and uh, got around that corner and finally ended up making it to this shipper. I'm all stressed out, right? And uh, I just wanted to relax. So this shipper, because I got there with like three minutes to spare, this shipper unloaded me in 30 minutes. I just wanted to relax, you know, after all that. Shipper unloads me in 30 minutes. So I'm like, fuck. So I text my fleet manager and I say, listen, I'm not telling you that I won't do anything, but if you have a load that you want to send me and one's going east and one's going west, send me west. So he's like, you know. So I just send that. Don't think about it. As soon as I hit this departure thing, people are saying they ain't got no, like, they are sitting around. They're not getting no freight. As soon as I hit that button, depart receiver, I start getting texts with another load. I have four hours and 57 minutes left on my clock. My 70-hour clock, as a matter of fact. So I'm getting pissed off because I, you know, I just wanted, I thought I was going to be going to a truck stop, relaxing overnight, maybe picking up something, you know, midday or whatever the next morning. So I'm like, okay. So I leave this damn shipper and the same fucking thing happens again on the way out. <clears throat> this guy was trying to tell me how to get out of there, but it's so complicated that I ended up not quite as bad, but get going through the same thing to get out of there. <clears throat> My pickup was in uh, somewhere 70 miles deeper into Pennsylvania. So now it's like, so in four hours, I need to drive 71 miles, get a washout, and uh, navigate these badass streets. I make it to the shipper. <clears throat> it was a dropping hook, so I had till 12 o'clock to get there, but my hours were running out. <clears throat> I get there with... 35 minutes left of my clock. So I hurry up, check in. The guy tells me to drop it in this dock. So boom, drive down, set up, back in, boom, get it in because I'm under some pressure. <clears throat> tells me to back in this dock and then pick up this other trailer that was wherever it was. So unhook my trailer. I'm trying to get everything done so I can at least show, you know, uh, post-trip inspection, off-duty, just all the shit you need to do. So I uh, hurry up back into this other trailer I'm supposed to be taking with me. And the trailer was super high. And I will always get out when I'm backing under a trailer just to check to see if, if uh, the uh, trailer is flush with the kingpin or the uh, fifth wheel. But I didn't, you, normally you're going to hear that noise of that uh, fifth wheel kind of scraping against the trailer. I didn't hear it. So I kept backing up, jumped the fucking kingpin, and uh, 
but I didn't know it at the time. So I'm like, huh, okay, well, I heard something. Let me do a tug test. Did a tug test. Felt like it was uh, connected. But I was like, something doesn't sound right. You know, obviously, you're going to get out and look anyway. So I get out, look at it, <clears throat> realize I jumped the kingpin. So now I need to raise the trailer even more, lower my airbags, and then I had to put, like, I found a little piece of wood that I put under the front of the fifth wheel to kind of lift it up a little bit and then uh, pull it out from under it. Then I had to lower the trailer and then back back under it and connect. So once I was done with all that, I'm tired as hell physically, mentally, everything. I walk into the shipper and I say, I'm going to have to stay here overnight. And then, you know, they weren't being malicious or anything like that. She's like, well, why do you, you know, why do you have to stay here overnight? And I said, I ran out of hours. And I said, if I uh, pull out of here and accidentally, because I think I shut myself off at this point. If I pull out of here and accidentally trip my uh, Qualcomm and stating that I'm in driving status, <clears throat> your load may get there, but I won't be the one getting it there because I'd be in violation at that point. So she's like, okay, just stay in front of your trailer. You know, all right. So stay there all night at the shipper excellent shipper i forgot the name of them whoever they are nice shipper uh stay there till this morning get up this morning have to drive through all these back roads looks like there's distilleries and all kinds of shit out here just to get to a main highway this very shady very slick from the day before so you're dealing with that and uh Anyway, this is a load that I'm taking from uh, someplace. I don't know the name. Somewhere in Pennsylvania to Iowa. And uh, so that was it, man. I mean, yesterday was a beast, I'm going to tell you. So one thing I'm telling you is the, the hardest part to me, it seems like, lately isn't the driving. It's not the backing. It's none of that. It's not the congestion. It's not any of that stuff this clock stresses me out and I think it has a lot to do with my dad growing up time was like very important then when I went in the Marine Corps you know time is very important being somewhere five minutes early or ten minutes late that kind of thing and you know when I'm dealing with getting to a shipper receiver on time and I'm dealing with like I pulled into this TA with uh, 20 minutes left on my 70 hour clock I needed to uh, get as far as I could because now I'm running on recaps so tomorrow it means I only have eight hours and some odd minutes to drive so I need to get as far as I could I'll be getting up at two o'clock in the morning to get this in to uh, Iowa by nine o'clock I think I have uh, 400 miles or something like that to go or just under four so Anyway, that was my day. Today was actually once I got through, once I got out of Pennsylvania, it's like the heavens opened up, flat land, non shitty roads. So it was actually a pretty decent trip. Now I'm having a better time than this Swift guy next, you know, about five rows down. Listen, for those of you guys that aren't into, aren't driving yet that might be watching this, here's what you don't want to do. See this Swift truck over here? that nosed in when it's time for him to get out in the morning or whenever he wants to get out that's going to be some hell to pay trying to back out of there worrying about what's coming down this row and all that kind of stuff i know why somebody would do that either they go well, there's a number of reasons maybe he was in a hurry he had to park real quick normally it's going to be somebody that's afraid to back and they would rather take the short-term relief of just getting parked now and uh, saving their self the aggravation. But trust me, in the morning or whenever that person decides to pull out, it's not going to be worth it. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for listening to me rant. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I keep heading west. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be, you know, a lot of people... We're talking about loads that they they would take or won't take anything else like that. My trainer made decent money with me 
without me. I know he made money with me because I was running, but uh, I'm not turning down any loads under, th there's three stipulations. I'm not doing New York and New Jersey yet. I'm not gonna do any multi-stop loads yet. And I'm not doing any flower loads, ever. And the reason I don't wanna do New York, New Jersey, all that stuff, well, for the same reason that I got jacked up in this last load, all them tight ass turns and all this kind of stuff, uh, I mean, and then a lot of them tolls and stuff that you have to hit in and out of there, stuff like that. And then multi-stop loads aren't really a big deal, but I'm one of those people that likes to like, not necessarily master something, but understand what I'm doing fully before I go to the next step and adding multiple stops is just adding multiple layers of complication. And then, you know, I'm sure somebody's, but Lyle! My first load was a 45 stop low. Congratulations. I, hey, bravo. You know, I, uh, that's, that's great, you know, and I'm sure I will get to that point. But until then, until I master these one stop loads, I'm going to be holding off on multiple ones unless, you know, unless another option would be to head back to Pennsylvania. Then I'll do like a hundred stop load or something like that because I, I hate Pennsylvania. I feel sorry for anybody that just gets stuck in the Northeast. And you know what? Next time I'm in the uh, terminal, I'm gonna just just have to talk to my fleet manager about. Listen, I'm not gonna turn anything down. But listen, if you have, if you ever have a choice between sending me to the east or to the west, primarily northeast, always send me to the west or south, not the northeast. Can't stand it. I hate it. And most of you guys that didn't grow up in the Northeast, you'll learn to hate it too. Anyway, I don't know about that. I do want to thank you guys for uh, stopping by my channel. I am going to post some of that footage from some of these accidents and everything in uh, Pennsylvania. And there's some good CB talk on that as well. So uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to get that up. But uh, that actually was, if it's what I think it is, it should be a good video. Anyway. Thanks for rocking with me. I'm out.